Of the most polarizing and controversial figures of the 21st century, almost no other person can be considered as divisive as Donald J. Trump. Millions of people have allowed this man to consume countless hours of their lives, either loving him or hating him. Some deem him as a fascist and an ignoramus, while others view him as a persecuted savior for American patriotism and traditional values. But what is the truth? While many of Trump's critics resort to simple name-calling and cheap mockery to denounce him, or use some of his personal scandals as a means of crushing his political stances, there are concerns that a Christian should have when viewing the 45th President of the United States. Here, we will be going over seldomly brought up yet significant critiques that every Bible believer should be concerned with when it comes to Trump. Let's begin. Up until his presidential campaign, Donald Trump has never openly shown an emphasis for God and the Bible. Because of its appeal to much of his voting base with evangelicals, Trump gives lip service to the book, but he fails to demonstrate a basic understanding of the scriptures. Take this instance, for example. Okay. You mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book. And you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, there's I don't no want to get into it. There's no, no verse that means I, I a lot just, to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like. No, I don't want to do that. Are you I mean, an Old okay. Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible, the whole Bible is an incredible, I joke uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. But uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special. Now, it might be interpreted that he was not going to pick a favorite Bible passage within the Word of God as it could be seen as neglecting the whole of Scripture, which might have even been a fair point. However, this didn't stop him from attempting to provide a favorite verse of Scripture on a later interview with CBN. The Bible, you talked about yeah, the art of the deal, great book. The Bible, even better. Why is that for you? What well, there's it? so many things like, you know, uh, you take uh, whatever you want to say. There's so many things that you can learn from it. Uh, Proverbs, the chapter, never bend to envy. I've had that thing all of my life where you are, people are bending to envy. And they're just, it's, actually, it's an incredible book. So many things you can learn from the Bible and you can lead your life. And I'm not just talking in terms of religion. I'm talking in terms of leading a life, mm -hmm. even beyond a religion. There's so many brilliant things in the Bible. The problem for Trump is that bend to envy has no reference in scripture anywhere. Some have defended Trump by saying this is in reference to Proverbs 24 verses 1 to 2 or Proverbs 23 verse 17. But this quote is not even a close paraphrase to the context of these passages as they warn about being envious of evil men. Sure, maybe a Christian shouldn't be envious, however, Trump is not quoting scripture. Another factor to consider is that it is only now that Trump has started selling copies of the King James Version with his God Bless the USA Bibles placing the American Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance in the same bindings as the Holy Scriptures as if they are somehow on the same level. This is a recent change, possibly to reach a growing surge of believers in the authorized version, but most likely because the KJV does not have a copyright tied to paying royalties. What should be noted is that up until this point, 
Trump has been seen holding a RSV, a version accepted by the Catholic Church, which is a factor that will become important as we continue. The Word of God says in 1 Peter 1 verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Trump doesn't show fruits of being born again, and his dearth of biblical knowledge should be apparent. In 2016, Trump's inaugural address was led by Paula White Kane a female charismatic televangelist. While she is not known for her sound doctrine, she is also not permitted to teach scripture according to 1 Corinthians 14 verses 34 to 35, where it says, Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Kenneth Copeland, one of the greatest charlatans and frauds of televangelism, preached for one of Trump's rallies on November 7, 2022. One should know that Kenneth Copeland has completely bent the knee to Rome and the Vatican as explicitly demonstrated on July 9, 2014, where Pope Francis made a personal message to Copeland's audience, had Tony Palmer, a bishop, explain how the Protestant movement is coming to an end at Copeland's pulpit, and called for the unity of Protestants and Catholics. The Protestant Reformation saw that the Church was not bound by the traditions and doctrines of man, but by God through his holy scriptures. The papacy was deemed as antithetical to the gospel according to those who protested Rome, as the Catholic clergy would take away the simple truth of salvation achieved by grace through faith in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Defiance of this system led to the executions and slaughters of millions who sought for liberty from this oppressive organization. The self-professed mother who has made herself drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? The fact that Trump would have anything to do with Copeland should sound the alarm for anyone watching this video so far. And yet we are only just beginning. Paula White had made a blasphemous political ad titled, God Made Trump, which sought to make Trump a messianic figure. Take this quote into consideration and tell me something doesn't sound right here. A man who cares for the flock, a shepherd to mankind who won't ever leave nor forsake them. I need the most diligent worker to follow the path and remain strong in faith. A man who cares for the flock, a shepherd to mankind who will never leave nor forsake them. Keep in mind, Trump had reposted this on his Truth Social account. Jesus said in John 10 verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Why on earth is Donald J. Trump allowing this comparison to be made if he really loves the Lord Jesus, the true Good Shepherd? Another case of Trump being compared with Jesus is from a book sold on Amazon called President Donald J. Trump, The Son of Man, The Christ. 
Interestingly enough, Jesus did prophesy in Matthew 24, verse 24, saying, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Could Trump be one of these deceivers? Donald Trump was educated at Fordham University in 1964 for the span of two years. Eric Trump attended Georgetown University in 2002 along with Tiffany Trump in 2020. And Donald's sister made a $4 million donation to Fairfield University in Connecticut. You might ask, why does any of that matter? because all of these schools are Jesuit universities. Within American history, of the 115 Supreme Court justices, only 15 have been Roman Catholics. Why is that important to know? Because right now, six of the nine Supreme Court justices are of that 15, and three of them were appointed by Donald Trump with his administration. Amy Coney Barrett, Neil McGill Gorsuch, and Brett Kavanaugh. These were the only appointed Supreme Court justices appointed under Trump, and both Kavanaugh and McGill were both educated at the same Jesuit high school. Other notable figures that Trump had appointed during his presidency was Anthony Fauci, who is highly Jesuit educated and John Kelly, who was a graduate of Fordham University and was the director of Homeland Security. You might also question, what is the significance of that? Because the Jesuits are a counter-reformation movement that are devoted to the complete destruction of Protestantism. Founded by Ignatius Loyola in 1540, the Jesuits also known as the Society of Jesus, are considered the military branch of the Catholic Church that have used subversion, espionage, and other destructive tactics to bring entire governments and nations to ruin to the submission of the Pope. They have even been kicked out of Catholic-controlled countries for their radical beliefs and extremism. Many of the founders of the United States had very strong opposing views about this group. John Adams, in a letter to Thomas Jefferson, wrote on May 5th, 1816, saying, I do not like the reappearance of the Jesuits. Shall we not have regular swarms of them here? In as many disguises as only a king of the gypsies can assume? dressed as printers, publishers, writers, and schoolmasters? If ever there was a body of men who merited damnation on earth and in hell, it is the society of Loyola's. Nevertheless, we are compelled by our system of religious toleration to offer them an asylum. Abraham Lincoln said about the Jesuits, as documented in the book Fifty Years in the Church of Rome by Charles Chiniqui, in chapter 60, this war, being the American Civil War, would have never been possible without the sinister influence of the Jesuits. We owe it to popery that we now see our land reddened with the blood of her noblest sons. The fact that these American founders all emphasized the danger of this order completely contradicts the sentiment that is shared by the leading political powers of America today, including Trump. What is interesting with all of these Jesuitical connections is what the United States Congressional Record contains concerning the Society of Jesus. On December 14, 1912, Report Number 1523, what is known as the Extreme Jesuit Oath of Induction, 
can be found with quotes such as I, insert name here, now in the presence of Almighty God, declare and swear that His Holiness, the Pope, is Christ's Vice Regent and is the true and only head of the Catholic or Universal Church throughout the earth, and that by virtue of the keys of binding and loosing given His Holiness by my Savior, Jesus Christ, He hath power to dispose heretical kings, princes, states, commonwealths, and governments, and they may be safely destroyed. In the same paragraph, it details opposing churches and governments to Rome, and states, All adherents in regard that they may be usurped and heretical, opposing the sacred mother church of Rome. It then says, I do now denounce and disown any allegiance as due to any heretical king, prince, or state, named Protestant or liberal, or obedience to any other laws, magistrates, or officers. Finally, the oath makes the initiate swear, I do further promise and declare that I will, when opportunity presents, make and wage relentless war, secretly and openly, against all heretics, Protestants and Masons, as I am directed to do, to extricate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex, or condition, and that will hang, burn, waste, boil, flay, strangle, and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women, and crush their infants' heads against the walls in order to annihilate their extraable race. That when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poisonous cup, the strangulation cord, the steel of the poignard, or the leaden bullet, regardless of the honor, rank, dignity, or authority of the persons, whatsoever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I at any time may be directed so to do by any agents of the Pope or superior of the Brotherhood of the Holy Father of the Society of Jesus. If the Society of Loyola's is educating some of the world's most influential men and women, do you mean to tell me that their values are not somewhat instilled into their graduates? How else would events like Pope Francis, the first ever elected Jesuit Pope, be allowed to speak in Congress on September 27th, 2015. The halls of Congress had never heard anything like this. Mr. Speaker, the Pope of the Holy See. As Pope Francis made his way down the aisle, there was no glad handing or back slapping. Speaker of the House John Boehner had banned all that. So they cheered Francis and he stood there for a moment, taking it all in. No pope had ever stood here, and minutes before, just after entering the Capitol, Francis was blessed by the House chaplain. In his office, Speaker Boehner, a devout Catholic and former altar boy, fidgeted and paced, visibly nervous, before welcoming the pope. Your Holiness, welcome. All through the speech. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker. The speaker, this famously emotional man, struggled to hold back the tears and couldn't, overwhelmed by a dream come true. As the Pope addressed the American politicians, the chamber hushed. They actually listened. Speaker Boehner had also tried to ban applause, but that didn't work. Pope Francis stirring deep emotions again and again. God bless America. He left the chamber and walked out onto the west front of the Capitol, where 50,000 and more had gathered on the mall and asked them to pray for him. John Boehner overcome again, and Vice President Joe Biden summing up a remarkable day. And 
As a part of recognizing the threat of Rome and the Jesuits, there was a man named Alberto Rivera, who defected from the Jesuit order, who has given a testimony about the Society of Loyola's and the threat that they pose to America. Links are in the description for more information concerning Rivera and the Jesuits. On the same day that Donald Trump had riot control units dispersed with tear gas to shut down George Floyd protests for his photo op in front of St. John's Episcopal Church, all the while holding a revised standard version, Trump and the then First Lady went to St. John Paul's National Shrine to pay tribute to the deceased Pope. The fact that Trump would do both of these things within the same day, along with everything that we have discussed in this segment, shows his attempt to send a message. Trump's allegiance is to the papacy. At another notable event where Trump shows his friendship with Rome is on October 20th, 2016 at the 71st Annual Alfred E. Smith Memorial Dinner. As described on Wikipedia as, an annual white tide dinner in New York City to raise funds for Catholic charities supporting children of various needs in the Archdiocese of New York. Trump demonstrates once again his loyalty in serving the papacy, along with his opposition party candidate for president of that year, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Which, on a side note, her husband and former president of the United States, Bill Clinton, is also Jesuit educated from Georgetown University. There, Bishop Timothy Dolan was seated between the two candidates. They even took the time to take a photo together with the American and Vatican flags placed on both sides of the subjects, showing once again the weight of the Vatican's influence in American politics. In the speech by Trump, he made various assertions about the importance of Catholicism in America and his pledge to stand against those who speak out against popery. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias, to defend religious liberty, and to create a culture that celebrates life. This is not the first time that Trump has expressed these types of ideas, as demonstrated with this clip here. We will not stand for any attacks against Judge Barrett's faith. Anti-Catholic bigotry has absolutely no place in the United States of America. It predominates in the Democrat Party, and we must do something immediately about it, like a Republican win. And let's make it a really big one. Before saying anything concerning this next clip, listen to what Trump has to say about the world, and consider the prophetic implications these statements might be tied to. We've got to be very strong, very, very smart, and we've got to come together, not only as a nation, but as a world community. Thank you very much. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Despite being accused of being a nationalist, his speech ends with a call for the world to come together in global unity. A call that is to come into fulfillment in the end times world religious system, led by the papacy, where the world will worship the beast and his image according to Revelation 13. In the end, Trump is a servant of Rome, and his actions show it loud and clear. Donald Trump has joined the kings of the earth in spiritual fornication with the Whore of Babylon, the Vatican, 
and is leading millions of Americans ever closer into accepting this false church system as religiously tolerant and concerned for the liberty of every American, all the while being seduced by the will of the Jesuits. America's founders saw Rome's influence with fear, as so many Protestants did when they fled for America to escape the tyrants and oppressors of Catholic Europe. And yet this time there will be nowhere else to turn. The Vatican's stranglehold over millions of Roman Catholics with unbiblical tradition and ministers of Satan placed millions in the dark for over a thousand years only to have that stranglehold broken by the pure light of the scriptures. As preserved through the traditional text and Reformation Bibles such as the Authorized Version, a version that has become foreign to so many that claim to be Protestants today. The seduction of ending woke politics and upholding traditional values has blindsided millions into thinking that seeking a politician like Trump to rescue them is their only solution. And yet they forget that righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Trump cannot save America. Neither can the Catholic Church save your soul. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can. It's time for Americans to stop saying, God bless America, and instead cry, Lord have mercy on us. It's time for Americans to repent with sackcloth and ashes for the wickedness and debauchery it has committed. It's excess of wine and drunkenness its wars and its murders, because the day of judgment will come upon this nation soon. It's time to wake up America, forget about making your country great again, and repent and fear God again. There is no other choice.